Proper land preparation and weed control is vital to obtain a good yield. To help with these processes, we recommend these six steps. 1. Choose an appropriate field. 2. Decide whether that field requires slashing. 3. Determine whether the field requires herbicide application. 4. Decide whether your field needs ploughing or ridging. 5. Plant, then apply a pre-emergence herbicide. 6. Control weeds as the crop grows. Let's take a look at these steps one by one. Let's start with how to choose an appropriate field. Cassava will thrive in fertile soils. When selecting a field, keep an eye out for signs of biological activity like warm casts, but avoid some of the less desirable attributes for a cassava field. For example, a cassava field should not be stony, shallow, waterlogged or sloping. The most important part of field selection is finding a good fertile soil. Now, let's look at steps 2 and 3 together. To make the right decision on whether a field requires slashing and or glyphosate application, you must consider the type of fallow vegetation in your field. There are four different situations a field may fall under. 1. A bush vegetation with trees or woody shrubs. 2. A broadleaf vegetation without trees or shrubs. 3. A grass vegetation. or 4. Very little vegetation. If your field falls in the first description of bushy vegetation with trees or woody shrubs, it will almost always be taller than 50 centimetres. This is about the height to your knee, or slightly above. If it is taller than 50 centimetres, you cannot apply herbicide. It is too tall to go over it with a sprayer. Instead, you will need to slash the vegetation. Bush vegetation typically regrows slowly, and you do not need to apply herbicide after slashing. You can directly clear the land. If the vegetation is less than 50 cm tall, do not slash it. Instead, directly apply it with a glyphosate-containing herbicide like Roundup Turbo, Touchdown Forte, Sarusate or Forsup. Check the label for proper application and always wear protective equipment while applying herbicides to ensure safety. The vegetation must have green and fresh leaves for the herbicides to work effectively. Wait two weeks after spraying to allow the herbicides to complete a total kill. Then clear the land. If your field fits into the second situation and has mainly broadleaf vegetation without trees or shrubs, first check whether the broadleaf vegetation is fresh and green. If it is not green, but rather dry and withered, you need to slash it then clear the land. Herbicides can only effectively kill the weeds if they are fresh and green. Likewise, if the vegetation is fresh, green and taller than 50 centimeters, you will need to slash it. It is too tall to allow going over it with a sprayer. As with bush vegetation of over 50 centimeters, regrowth is typically slow and you do not need to apply herbicide after slashing. You can directly clear the land. However, if the vegetation is less than 1.5 meters tall, you can use a glyphosate-containing herbicide rather than slash it. In this case, follow the same procedures as with the low bush vegetation and don't forget to use protective equipment. The third vegetation situation, grass fallows, can prove more difficult to control since grasses grow quickly. Because of this quick regrowth, grasses are best controlled with herbicides. First, if it is, slash the grass and allow it to regrow for about two weeks. Then apply a glyphosate-containing herbicide. If it is not taller than 50 centimeters, apply the herbicide directly without slashing. Remember to follow safety precautions and wear protective equipment, then wait about two weeks to allow a total kill by the herbicide. The final situation of very little vegetation generally does not present a need to slash or spray, so you can proceed directly to tilling operations. 
However, certain problem weeds do create an exception to this rule. These difficult weeds include Tythonia, Chromolania, Speargrass or Imperata, Guinea grass or Panicum, Mimosa, Ipomoea, and Muramia. If you see any of these weeds in your field, first spray them with a glyphosate containing herbicide or they will prove difficult to control once your cassava has been planted. Also, if you see these weeds growing after clearing a broadleaf or bush vegetation, you should spray these before planting cassava. Now that the first three steps are complete and the land is cleared, we can move on to step four, where we will help you determine whether your land needs ploughing and or ridging. These operations require an investment in the form of labour or money into a tractor service, but ploughing and ridging can increase yields twofold. You must consider the cost of tillage operations and decide whether yield improvements will be substantial enough to offset that investment. To help you make that choice, let's talk about these tillage operations in more detail. Ploughing can either be performed manually or by tractor. It loosens the soil and facilitates penetration of the roots. Ploughing also speeds up the release of nutrients from organic matter and plant residues in the soil. Ploughing is sometimes performed twice, mainly as a weed control method, but it is not very effective in this regard. If you have followed steps 2 and 3 to clear your land properly, a single ploughing operation is sufficient. Generally, ploughing increases your yield by at least 2 tonnes per acre. Use this number to compare this benefit against the cost of ploughing. For example, if you expect to sell your crop at 10,000 naira per tonne, the gain from ploughing would be 2 tonnes times 10,000 naira per tonne, which works out to 20,000 naira per acre. Therefore, if the cost of ploughing is less than 20,000 naira per acre, we advise you proceed with ploughing. Let's now talk about the need for ridging. Ridging your field has several advantages, like helping to store more water in the soil, which can be useful in areas with short rainy seasons and heavy rain showers. It delays the growth of weeds as well, and usually saves on one early weeding operation. As you consider the need for ridging, ask these questions. Do you intend to harvest during the dry season? Is your soil high in clay and sometimes waterlogged? Is controlling weeds in your field often difficult? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we strongly advise you ridge your field. Even if you answered no, ridging can still help increase yield, but you will need to compare yield again with the cost of ridging, just as you did with ploughing. Ridging increases yield by at least 1.5 tonnes per acre. You can compare this figure against the cost of ridging. For example, if you plan to sell cassava roots at 10,000 naira per tonne, the gain from ridging will be 1.5 tonnes times 10,000 naira per tonne for a total of 15,000 naira per acre. Therefore, if the ridging costs less than 15,000 naira per acre, it makes sense to proceed with ridging. In short, ploughing and ridging are great for producing higher yields, but the increased revenue must be measured against the cost. Zero tillage, no ploughing or ridging, is only recommended in combination with very good weed control and when the soil is light in texture with good water infiltration. Once the land is prepared, you can proceed to step five, planting cassava. Always plant at one meter between rows and 0.8 meters within rows after one or two good rain showers when the soil is moist. This will give you the optimal planting density of about 5,000 plants per acre. If you expect low sprouting, you can plant at 0.7 meters within rows instead. We advise spraying a pre-emergence herbicide like Lagan or Prime Extra Gold within 24 hours of planting if you expect fast and early weed growth. This will kill weeds as they sprout from the soil. Check the herbicide label for the correct application rate. Lagun should be applied at 0.5 litres per acre, whereas Prime Extra Gold 
should be applied at 1.6 litres per acre. Wear protective equipment while you apply to ensure safety. You must wear goggles, nose mask, overalls, gloves and closed gum boots. Visit your farm regularly after planting and replace cuttings that did not sprout after two to three weeks. We have now reached the final step in the process. Controlling weeds during crop growth is vital to obtaining a good yield. If you have completed steps one through five correctly, weed control during crop growth will be much easier. When weeds cover about a third of your field and reach the four to six leaf stage and are about 15 to 20 centimeters tall, they must be controlled. If left uncontrolled, weeds will take away light, water, and nutrients from your cassava crop, resulting in lower yields. There are three main methods of weed control. Manual weeding by hoe or cutlass, mechanical weed control with a weeder, and the use of herbicides. A combination of these methods provides optimal weed control. If you opt for the herbicides method, look at the type of weeds in your field. If they are mainly grasses, choose a herbicide made specifically to control grasses, like Fusilade Forte at 1.5 litres per acre. A grass-specific herbicide will not affect the cassava crop. For all other weed types, you can use herbicides containing glufosinate ammonium, like Lifeline, Basta, and Fascinate, or those containing glyphosate, like Roundup Turbo, Touchdown Forte, Sarusate, Forsap, and Delsate. Alternate between different herbicides to avoid buildup of resistant weeds. However, do not use these products during the first eight weeks of crop growth. These herbicides will affect the cassava if sprayed on the leaves of green stems. Instead, use manual or mechanical weed control. After the first eight weeks, you can use these herbicides to control broadleaf vegetation. But always use a sprayer with a shield so that you do not spray the green parts of your cassava crop. Lastly, do not use herbicides that contain paracrit as it has been shown to cause severe health problems. Let's now look back at what we've learned. Proper land preparation and weed control are vital to obtaining a good yield from your cassava crop. To achieve this aim, we recommend the following steps. First, choose an appropriate field with fertile soil. Next, decide whether to slash and or spray to clear your field. This decision depends on the type of fallow vegetation in your field. Then, you need to determine whether to plow and or ridge your field. These operations increase yield, but at a cost, so you must weigh the value of the increased yield against the investment. After land preparation, you are ready to plant, and you should consider the use of pre-emergence herbicides. Finally, Choose an appropriate method of weed control during crop growth. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this video. For more information, here are some helpful resources.